I'm Madison Gray, and this is The Wholehearted Podcast. Today on the podcast, I am thrilled to have one of my very best friends, Caitlin Streit, affectionately known as the Mellow Mama across the internet. Caitlin is a conscious parenting coach, passionate about making respectful parenting concepts easy for everyone to understand and apply. Caitlin and I both believe that women are a powerful force, and one of the most effective ways to change the world is just to help women slow down and simplify to figure out what they really need so that they can more deeply connect with themselves and their purpose and the people in their lives. As Rosalind Ross says, to be the hero we wish to see in our children. Caitlin is also an accomplished small business owner in a couple different entrepreneurial ventures, which you will hear us talk about in this episode. And she is an avid Tony Robbins fan, a huge goal setter, and on top of all of that, just one of the most effortlessly feminine women that I've ever met. She's so much fun to be around and talk to, and we accidentally let this episode go for much longer than we intended, so I hope that you'll have as much fun uh, listening to it as we did recording it. Caitlin! Caitlin, hi. Hi again, after we've already been talking for 29 minutes. <laughs> Hello. Oh my gosh, you guys. Okay, so I'm really excited about this episode because I think this is a topic that unfortunately, at least in my niche, is kind of uh, not cool to talk about when, when you think about like slow living and I guess with intentional living, it might be more popular, but specifically with motherhood and feminine energy and slow living, I think minimalism too, where you're just trying to like really simplify and pare down. It's becoming less cool to be uh, focused on goals, especially this time of year, like at the new year. And I thought you would just be the per well, I already know that you're going to be the perfect person. <laughs> you're going to be my favorite guest of all time. So I'm really pulling out my ace yes. card for this. For this episode right at the beginning thank you oh the first of many of many appearances on my podcast yes caitlin but the mellow mama um so caitlin i know that we've already discussed this at length before hitting record but why do you feel like goal setting even in the winter is something you feel like is part of a meaningful healthy life for you well, first of all, thanks for having me on the podcast. I'm so excited because we feel as if we have our own podcast just in our regular weekly mm -hmm. conversation. Um, when it, <laughs> We're like, we should start recording these. I know. Yeah, we, I mean, I think we've said that. Um, when it comes to the conversation of setting goals in, in the winter, I think that is a really important distinction, first of all, especially with the whole concept of the real new year being in the spring with birth and rebirth and renewal. Yeah. I think that I've even gotten in the past in the mindset of this isn't the time for goals, not now. This is the time mm -hmm. to rest and mm -hmm. renew and um, really just hunker down. Um, but I think actually you I saw an analogy that you recently shared that was so perfect. And I think I, honestly, I'm going to just like let you share it really quick because it's really my answer um so if you want to take back the mic yeah no i know what you're yeah. talking about <laughs> thank, oh, yes, thank yes. you if you just interview me for this podcast that'd be great <laughs> no so um yeah i i was reflecting on this too because being like in the slow living niche i also used to subscribe to this thought process that maybe goal setting was actually um you know, like this, this trend that everybody does the new year that was actually kind of harmful for me as a woman. And we're supposed to just be embracing this, embracing this time of hibernation and just like hunkering down. And then I started gardening and actually like getting more in touch with what I feel like nature. Oh, here comes my dog. What's up, Jim? So cute. Um, and I feel like that, that's when things started to shift for me because I was like, wait, actually, Winter is the perfect time for me to start reflecting and planning out what I'm going to get to work with, you know, in the spring when, when life starts coming back 
it's the time to be journaling and um yes yeah, sowing you know not maybe maybe sowing some seed like small seeds indoors but like planning out our garden i guess is like the metaphor that yeah i think you were referring to referring to and yeah i think it's actually so such an important part of rest that gets um overlooked is just like rest is not always passive like rest can be active too and i think that is one of the parts of rest that becomes like really replenishing and invigorating for us when like spring and then like summer comes around where we're in that growth and just like going after our goals uh, type season. So I guess we're just starting with that just to kind of give permission if you feel like you're craving some getting back in touch with like, wait, what do I really want this year? Oh, wait, no, I don't want to be one of those people that has resolutions or um, sets goals. And I think what I'm trying to say is if you are craving that, I feel like it's per- it is perfectly natural. I don't know. What do you yeah, think? I, ac- I completely agree, which is why I was like, hey, take it back for a second because this is a metaphor that I heard directly from you. And I love what you said. I took a note of rest not always being passive I think that's a huge misconception too and as somebody that helps parents um, feel Mm -hmm. like they can embrace a slower lifestyle with their children and be truly in the present as much as possible with their kids and themselves one of the biggest things that I advocate for that I don't necessarily see shared on a lot of other parenting platforms I, I, I see a lot of like tactical advice and um, here's how to deal with this scenario um, mm-hmm. information, but not necessarily the bigger picture conscious parenting uh, stuff that is like how you live your life and what you're modeling and how that allows you to step into the tactical stuff, how that allows you to actually mm-hmm. implement that and practice conscious parenting on a daily basis. Um, and some yeah. of that is the the not so passive things that make it possible for us to be in this like restful mm-hmm. anti survival state in our house our households. Yeah. For example, if I do plan out my week on a Sunday evening, and I can do that in a soft slow way like you know have my favorite tea and um wait until the perfect moment like you know when my children are down and I feel like this is my time um to plan and prepare for the week yes romanticize it make it an experience but then also that creates it's sort of like building the foundation for rest throughout the week so that I'm not in chaos mode Mm -hmm. and not to say that it's always like that. Obviously, uh, Maddie and I are similar in that I think we are very much like very comfortable flying by the seat of our pants, <laughs> kind of like, well, whatever Definitely. feels good. The factory setting. Yeah, like, exactly. Yes. And I think that it's interesting to say that that is the factory setting and then knowing how beneficial it is for us mm-hmm. to totally. uh, sort of implement goals, implement some structure and some plan in order to be Mm -hmm. more restful or we I think we're going to talk a little bit about feminine energy that's like become a very popular topic and I think that allows me to step into the feminine a lot more I think it it helps me refrain from being again in my fight flight fawn or freeze like oh no Mm -hmm. we're behind or oh no like I don't have enough time for myself or I'm I'm pouring from a half empty jar um, I just think that mm-hmm. that part is is also restful. And I think that when it comes to setting goals specifically, as opposed to just like planning um, and taking yeah. a look at yeah. the day, hour yeah. by hour or whatever is going to serve you. Um, I think looking at goals helps us in a larger way. Um, I oftentimes, and I think we're going to kind of do this, like look at the foundational aspects of like what are we planning goals around like and I always use the four pillars of health wealth love and happiness when I Mm -hmm. when I plan around those things and I just kind of get an idea even if it's not necessarily the season of like really like 
plants and the seeds and watering them. Um, even just having a basic outline, an idea, and a vision for what I want um, to bring into my life, what do I want to cultivate, what do I want to be grateful for right now, too. I, you know, I think that's a huge piece of the goal setting process, especially in the winter, assessing like, where am I at? What do I love? Like, what are some things mm -hmm. that I might want to shift or want to look different a year from now? Um, I think that that might sound, it just, I think it's all about the perspective. Um, you see what you look for, you hear what you're listening for, right? If I look at goals from that perspective of, oh gosh, another another day, another hustler person who's trying to like whip more things yeah. out and yeah. someone that's not in the present yeah. who's looking to do more and be more. And um, then of course, yeah, that's totally what goals are going to be to you. That's what they're going to feel like. And I think that it's going to be icky and kind of gross and also yeah. not have bandwidth. Like they're not going to last. That's why a lot of people quit their goals yeah. <laughs> because it's not with that yeah. sort of like real rich intention and almost more like love for your life and appreciation for what you have and where you're right. at. Right. That's the frame of mind that I think we are starting with. That's the foundation that we're yeah. working yeah. from. Um, and so, yeah, I think. I think it's hard for people to get there though, coming from all the conditioning we've had and um, God, it could be so many things, right? I like, I was even thinking, I want to really, I want to get into the feminine energy thing, but I was thinking as you were talking, like the other night I was kind of reflecting on like my favorite, like when I'm at my best as a parent and like, like thinking a little bit about what did my life out, not like, I think in my opinion, like parenting and raising children, it's so integrated, even like, you know, I homeschool, like the whole way we raise, it, raise our kids is so integrated with our life like I think modern culture has really compartmentalized like okay so here's our time with the kids here's family time here's work time and I don't know I just can't live that way that sounds so draining but I was thinking like okay so on in the times where I've been my best as a parent yeah just like what how did I set up my life you know like what did that look like and there were like some kind of surprising things that came up in my mind and then I also thought about like, what are the times when I like really was struggling as a parent and what did my life look like? And I think in, in that way too, it's like really important for women to hear like, no, it is, it is, if you want to be a better parent, I think it's so crucial for you to set up your life the way that sets your soul on fire. Like that really, that really aligns with who you are and makes you happy on a daily basis. And if that means like, doing some type of work or living in some specific place or keep in my instance like I was thinking about how you know when I am at my best as a parent it was like silly things like you know what we were at the beach and watching the sunset every single day something about that makes me so happy and I know that's not every person but another little thing was like my house is clean like when my house is clean I'm a better parent yeah which is I don't know like really weird for me to admit but at this point I'm getting more comfortable with it because I feel like that's across the board <laughs> Keelan. yeah but like in Everybody. my mind I always think like oh I don't want to clean the house right now I want to be with the kids right now like I get that or you know like we have these things where we're like let me set aside the laundry and it's like I have to remind myself no like I'm actually such a better more calm peaceful present parent when I have the laundry done like when it feels accomplished yeah. And Same. so, yeah, I think that's another thing that when you were, when you were talking, like, um, sometimes I think when we start reflecting on goals, maybe shame like comes in for, for people, hundred percent, especially people um, about, in like, this space, I think in the, in the slow living for sure. category, people that are hoping to live a slower lifestyle. I think they're like, isn't that the anti slow <laughs> goals can't be slow. <laughs> But what if your goal yeah. is, I just want to be really intentional about my my house and the way it's set yeah. up, the amount of things we own, yeah, the right. how I feel when I wake up to a clean kitchen versus when I, like a small goal mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. could promote slow living is going 
just sleep with a clean kitchen, like closing up shop, having a sort of routine yeah. of, um, you know, like, okay, kitchen's closed at 7 p.m. and not leaving dishes in the sink. Or for me, not leaving dishes in the sink or things on the counter before I leave my home. So I always come home yeah. to a clean yeah. slate. So clean I just house. think that – yeah. I think that that reframe is so important. Like some goals promote yes. slow living. <laughs> some of your some of yes. your goals are so intentional and honestly, I think once we reframe the mindset around setting the goal, then accomplishing the goal, the actionable step can also be slow. I don't have to I don't have to be yeah. I don't have to have this obsessive mindset if I don't accomplish my clean kitchen before I head out for the day, yeah. then I'm bad. I failed great, I didn't accomplish this or whatever, or even, um, you know, feeling like if I don't do it exactly a certain way or doing it in a hurried, chaotic way of like, I've got to do this now, this is part of my goal, that again, that is an important thing to consider. But if you just have that reframe around, why am I setting the goal for a more intentional, slower lifestyle? Okay, what does the actionable step look like? Can it be slow? Can it be integrated? Can it be something that brings like even even the act, yeah. action of it? And I think this is in the Bible, like, you know, just the way that we look at our daily to do list, like our chores as like people running a household, if we sort of romanticize them as a blessing. And I don't know, I think that even simple goals like we're referring to cleaning and stuff a lot but it could be really, really anything that's going to enrich your life and make your soul kind of like come to life and really your best mm-hmm. best self come forward I like how you said mm-hmm. uh, things that set your soul on fire because I always use that Rosalind Ross quote where she says you know be the hero you wish to see in your kids oh, I love that. and yes. I think that that for me is the main reason that I'm always excited about goals um but and yeah. still remain intentional about the way I work toward them and the grace that I give myself mm-hmm. along the way. And um, I just, it always comes back to, for me as a parent, uh, like what what am I showing my children? What, what do they think mm-hmm. about, I don't know, like can you, can you still accomplish new things, learn new skills or change things about mm-hmm. your lifestyle or – I don't know, your habits, even as a parent, even as you're older, getting older. And I I want my kids to Mm -hmm. see that the answer is yes. Like you can always be growing and evolving and learning. I think that that's the main thing for me as somebody that loves setting goals in all the seasons (laughs) and refining my goals. Yes. Um, But the setting your soul on fire part is huge. I want my kids to see a vibrant mom that is like excited about things and it growing yeah. all the time and you know watering my little metaphorical leaves i guess like totally. yeah totally yeah okay caitlin i had a lot of questions from people being like um i want to set goals I, like i have all these dreams but like i just can't my kids are young they're or like it's too hard right now with kids questions like that about how like um I don't know, you were, so you were talking about being the hero you wish to see in your children and how you often give yourself grace at the end of days where you're like, you know what, that was not the hero <laughs> that I wished oh. to see because I know I have those days. <laughs> but then you're like, it's okay because I'm human and like the hero I want my kid to grow up and become and I think it's really powerful when you think about that. You're like, how would I want my kid to talk to themselves? And I often remind myself of that as I'm ta- speaking to myself in my mind at the end of, you know, a hard day um, where I'm like, you know what, I would want them to give themselves grace though and and uh, just have a sense of lightheartedness. Yeah. And this, uh, that, that, that other concept that I, you talk about a lot, which is like, I trust myself to go to the depths and come back, you know, like where you are able to um, – listen to the pain of whatever emotion you're in you know i think that we've all been conditioned by behaviorism to really avoid feelings and be like oh you're feeling you know you're okay. children i think many of us were like yeah you're okay or like oh but do you want to say it's like it's okay you'll be okay distract like, you yourself. Know, distract yourself you totally know. yes right distract yourself and um so i don't know how would you respond 
to moms like that who are like, you know what, I really do. I know I need a reset. I want to set some goals, but like, I just feel like my kids are making it too hard for me. Yeah. I think first of all, I would totally validate that feeling. I think all of us uh, um, mothers listening would raise their hand if in a room we were all sitting together and that question was asked, have you ever felt like it's impossible for you to make a shift or for you to set new Mm -hmm. goals or step into a season of excitement while you're raising babies and young children? I think everyone would raise their hand and be like, I have 100% had a day where I was like, is this even possible? I, I mean, there have been times where I, I actually recorded a podcast episode for the Mellow Mama podcast with someone who I just adore. Have you, do you follow um, Body Talk Basics? We, it'll be no. relevant for us as our daughters age, but no. I, ha- I wanted to talk to her so badly. She talks about really respectfully uh, starting the conversation about puberty and understanding the mm. like female body in such a like loving, mm-hmm. enriched way. And it's just, I mean, I have learned things from her and I'm always like in the conversation I had with her, I'm like, this is just so encouraging that my daughter doesn't have to grow up feeling unaware and un- uneducated about her own menstrual cycle, about the way her body is going to change and like understanding hormones, understanding, I mean, just all the, all the things that we should just know. (laughs) But anyway, this isn't the point. I just love her so much. So a little shout out to her. Okay. What's her, I'll, I'll link her, that show you guys did. Well, so here's the, the here's the thing. I have not published this episode because it was a complete disaster. (laughs) No, on my no. end, sweet Megan, so prepared, so wonderful, and so amazing. Like, I just so much incredible insight. Again, could not yeah. wait to talk to her. So fired up that my podcast, I was actually on track to have like two episodes a week. I have this big goal of like, okay, I want to be in the top 10 of parenting podcasts. And um, yeah, I I got to the point where I was interviewing her and I'm like, you know what? I don't know if I can even share this. Like, I don't know if this is usable material because there was just like, uh, you know, everybody, I don't know if everybody's like us, but you know, you've got the classic Ikea play kitchen. So that thing with the little (laughs) pans and the pots and Romy just banging around. Um, It was almost like if there was a toy, we don't, I don't use toys that like have sound or anything, but if something could make sound, if right. she could make She's it noisy, it like that was that the day, episode. that was the moment. Um, or of course, and the, that's not just the first oh. example, um, but obviously there have been many, many times as someone with really big goals and yeah. dreams and aspirations been there too. to help people all over the world, yeah. right? Like it's on my heart to help as many parents as I can. And then uh, I'll get a big goal in my mind and I'll start taking those actionable steps. And I'm like, I'm really doing it. Oh my goodness. Like I'm making it happen even in this tricky season with, uh, two Mm -hmm. younger children. Um, and, and then you do have roadblocks where you're like, is this an appropriate time for me to have this goal? (laughs) Like, does this even make sense? Uh, Am I setting myself up for success for this goal? Does, are they in alignment, you know, is what I'm doing and the way I'm doing it even making any sense? And am I just driving myself Exactly. Crazy? I've definitely felt like that. Yes, where I'm like, like, wow, I could have had a day where I didn't feel this level of frustration. Exactly. And instead, <laughs> I'm driving myself crazy. Yes. <laughs> and you feel almost like so deeply discouraged and that leads to mm-hmm. feeling almost like, I, I wouldn't say like resentful toward my children but maybe a little bit, like I start to feel this resentment of like, mm-hmm. oh, like, gosh, like, why right now? Why in this second? Like, why? Or or <laughs> you can't get them down for a nap. And it's like, that's like totally your normal yeah. schedule. And not that I have any rigidity really around our schedule, but at least like there's like a window that I can yeah. anticipate. Yeah, we But that. not when right. you have goals. <laughs> I know, you can't right? anticipate. And you're trying to get as much as you can. Yes. And so – into that little window of time where you're like, this is my work hour right here. Yes, so like, right oh, just this little yeah, not, hour. Nope, not today. And I, so I think that not today, so my answer is twofold. First of all, most of all, recognizing how normal it is mm-hmm. to feel like that. I yeah. completely understand. <laughs> um, and then the second part of my answer would be 
to just do it anyway um, and to give yourself the grace and, and really normalize the the growth timeline and how wavy it is yeah. and zoomy yeah. and like swirly like you can have and also okay so that that's part two right first of all totally normalize the feeling of discouragement or feeling like is this the season does this even make sense like how I can barely get through the day right like totally okay number two do it anyway and understand that the growth is not linear okay it, it can look yeah it can look so different and you might have yeah. um some days where you're like oh my gosh I was really present and really productive and it was so simple mm-hmm. and felt so seamless and I was in such a state of flow and you can have other days yeah. where you really just got to celebrate those yes ones. exactly they feel so good <laughs> and then there are yeah. some days where you're like you know what today's not the day and I and recognizing yeah. especially once you start to feel those feelings of discouragement of feeling f- deep frustration um especially if it's directed at people that you love so much where you can no longer, like I always tell parents, look for the little details, like their sweet little hands and sweet little faces that just need you. Um, Especially when they're sleeping. Like I've talked to one of my girlfriends recently about that and she was like, dude, we had the worst day today. And then she was like, but then like she fell asleep and I was just like sobbing because I was like, oh, you're so cute. Like just so precious. (laughs) Thank God for those moments. Yeah. And so I think like, recognizing okay mm-hmm. in those moments we're listening to the feelings like you were saying maddie mm-hmm. like okay wait what are these feelings really telling me right now okay i need to i need to stop because today just might not be the day or this might not be the moment yeah. i think that's another yeah. huge thing for us as uh, mothers sometimes we get it in our head i hear people often say like it's okay to have a bad day and i'm like how often are you really having a whole day of bad of uncomfortable right it's typically right. like a moment of, of an hour long attempt yeah. at recording a podcast where it's like yeah. that was a really hard <laughs> so that hour <laughs> yeah, or like yeah. really like yeah. your child feeling disappointed about something dysregulated and it turns into you know, like them flailing around or like my son crying in the store, you know, after just like, he's had a long day and, and me just being like, yeah, it's like, I totally get it, buddy. It's okay. But that's a Mm -hmm. hard moment, really. It's not like the the whole day isn't ruined. (laughs) Um, Totally. But we, so we were just talking about how we, uh, fun fact, both our oldest children were born on the same day, like literally the same age just so magical we didn't really. know we became mothers on the same day we didn't know but now we so know. cute <laughs> it's really cute um so but something like you know I, I, so our oldest are about to be seven well not okay we have more time we have more time yeah. with six let's yeah. not rush it but <laughs> saying how we feel like seven is really coming yeah. in hot and it feels like a new season of motherhood anyway that's a whole separate separate conversation the point is the longer I've been a parent and like the longer I've seen those, those crying in the store moments, it's like, I do feel like it gets easier. And like maybe mothers to like really young children need to hear that of like, you start to be able to have that, like you can remove yourself a little from the, I'm not saying I do this every time, but you can start to remove yourself. And I I see this, especially with my younger son, like when he starts to have like really huge emotions, I'm I I'm way more comfortable with it now than I was with my daughter of being like, whoa, was everything okay? Like, are you? Should I take you to see some? Like, you know, just like these really crazy thoughts that when you're a first time parent, you've never seen this before. Like, you've never seen a child go through all the emotions of a day, and to be honest, they can have like the best day and still have those moments just like we can yes. and I think that's like a real gift of having watching children get older um it's just like being able to have that little bit of like a space that grows yeah <laughs> between you and that um immediate reaction and the freak out another thing I was thinking as you were talking was like how you know with the internet now like we probably interpret other women's success as being just like really quick overnight and it really looks like that I think especially with people that you see like have big followings on Instagram or 
like a podcast that has tons of downloads. Um, and I feel like it's not sexy, but like I heard Casey Neistat talk about this on a podcast recently about how like patience is like the real, um, just like secret sauce to achieving any goal. It's just patience. And it's, it's not talked about because again, it's, it's not just like a quick thing you can apply, but, um, if you, if you stick to something over time for 20 years, like it's going to be a success, but most of us want our business or whatever we're setting out to do to happen right now. Yeah. And yeah, I think that's just another reality too. Like, I don't know about you, but I don't really put time limits on my goals anymore. I just like, I have them. They're like intentions, but I don't say like, okay, by this date on this day, I will buy this house. Yeah. Like, and I used to do that. And I think it made me really stressed out. Yeah. It adds <laughs> it a was whole too much layer pressure. of anxiety of like the, yeah. it's sort of, it goes in line with the whole behaviorist conditioning of yes. in the past, we were rewarded for quote unquote good behavior and punished when we miss the mark. So it's mm -hmm. almost like we have that subconscious wiring in our mind of like, am I going to be punished if I don't accomplish this goal that I actually set on my own in my own way, <laughs> in my own time frame? It makes sense though. I think we do punish we, ourselves. I mean, we definitely we do, do at least with criticism and guilt and shame. Yeah which yeah. are the main yeah. ways that parents punish their children. You're not lovable mm -hmm. when you don't align mm -hmm. with what I want mm -hmm. for you, what you I want you to do, yeah. how yeah. I want you to perform and behave for me. I think we, we just have that same inner critical voice that's still just hanging out. And it's like, yeah, well, yeah. of course you couldn't do it. Of course you weren't going to hit that goal. Um, and that's a whole other thing that I think both of us love talking about, just those – that are conditioned thought patterns for that are just so like scarcity um, based, like when it comes to goals, and that's kind of a different part of the conversation. But okay, talk about that though, because I am fascinated with that, and I'd love to know. Yeah, how, how do you quiet that voice? Like, what well, do you and you know, we kind of like I was gonna say. Remember, we were talking about when people are like, I can't do this with little kids. And I was like, okay, accept that that's normal to feel like that to notice that like the growth is not linear. Casey nice at the man, <laughs> like it <laughs> takes some time, like allow yourself to be patient, yeah. maybe refrain from having those crazy. I do have this like thing in my mind of like, uh, I, I have my pull up goal right now. I'm trying to get to 15 Love your by my, goal. by my birthday. So that's a date, but the thing about me setting it with the date, it's like, I, I'm, again, because I have established this foundation of different thinking, eliminating the inner critical parent yeah. one day at a time, not an easy task, but I, I have that as sort of a fun guideline, like, can I do it? Almost to sort of like, keep me inspired <laughs> as I'm because that one's like a physical growth strength <laughs> goal, <laughs> which is kind of crazy. And I was actually thinking about it. So this is, and I don't want to get too off track from my last point, but oh, um, when it comes to that goal, I was thinking about it the other day. Um, also sort of ties into sweet Megan, the body talk basics <laughs> woman. Um, but I was like, man, yeah, at this at this phase in my menstrual cycle, like, it just doesn't even make sense for me to do this many pull-ups. Like, why would I do this to myself? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so I just didn't. And I was like, I, I have no, I don't, I don't know. I, there's no sort of like inner shame or guilt or like, I, it's, it's literally just for fun. Just to see my, just right. to see myself right. grow in a new way. Like I couldn't do that before and now I can. That's cool. <laughs> That's fun to show my right. kids. And it's really actually, it is fun to directly show Donovan, my oldest, um, who is the same age as Mallory. And like, I, he's been asking me like, mom, let's see how many you can do today. And I, and some days I'll just be like, I don't think I can do very many today. I need to eat something or, you know, I'm kind of tired yeah. or I just don't really feel like it. But how interesting it is to see your children really look up to you and be like, man, like my mom can do cool stuff. Like she, she's like somebody that is growing. And, um, I don't know, like, uh, setting, setting new goals and markers for herself and her growth. I think that is such a cool example. And, um, I'm really proud of having that foundation as a parent. I'm so excited to give it to other parents so that 
I don't know, when our kids are 25, they'll be like, yeah, my mom's like always trying new things. She's always working toward yeah. new things and experimenting and doing it in such a loving way. Um, but I had like a part three for that answer to women um, that I guess would be more tactical, um, which I think is sometimes what people really do need. So obviously, yeah. you know, there's the heart and like, it's okay. And it's not always going to look the same. Some days are going to be whew, really tough and some days you're going to feel amazing. Um, but the third thing for me is definitely actually knowing my why behind certain goals and having those like actionable steps. So whatever your goals are, if they're in those categories of health, wealth, love, or happiness, um, you can, I love Tony Robbins. I always refer to him. I did when we, before we were recording, (laughs) but he, um, has a great goal setting workshop and in it, um, he does have like, okay, a five year goal, again, a rough estimate, a year goal, what do we need to do? Like, what could I do tomorrow to start working toward that? I think sometimes that can really help you shift your mindset to like, this is impossible to, okay, well, I could be doing this one little step every day, Mm -hmm. which definitely Mm -hmm. falls into line with what you were saying about the patience piece. I mean, I think another like weird, very weird anecdote, but Bruce Lee, by y'all, Donovan has a great, great joke. He always says, I'll share it with all of you now so you can tell it to your kids. They'll be like, who's Bruce Lee? Um, but you can have your kids tell it to other people and they will laugh because they'll know who Bruce Lee is. But uh, the joke is, what's Bruce Lee's favorite drink? What all? <laughs> like a- were you ready? Um, anyway, I wasn't prepared for so, that. Good joke for you to carry with you in the rest of your life. Thank um, you. Yes. If you're ever like, uh, good, I just need, I need an ice breaker. Have in your back <laughs> hey guys, what's up? <laughs> do you know what uh, Bruce Lee's favorite drink was? No. Uh, what the hell? I do. Yeah. So um, anyway, Bruce Lee always says like, he doesn't fear the man that practiced a thousand kicks one time. He pra- he fears the man that does like one kick a day for a thousand days. I probably butchered that, <laughs> but it's the same principle of like, you can implement yeah, tiny yeah. little, Over tiny time. little yes, tiny. Uh, shifts in your day. No, you nailed it. Um, and it'll, it'll compound, it'll come up and you'll be like, oh my oh, gosh, yes. wow, that's funny. <laughs> I'm really, I'm getting closer and closer right. all the time to whatever it is you're working right. toward. Right. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. We were going to talk about, what were we talking about? Conditioned thoughts. I want you to talk about that. I feel like Condition just how thoughts. we how we have like we kind of have been set up for a long Smart time to be like time. yeah like that's not realistic it's just not a realistic goal like oh. you can't have that or like you that's not p- going to be possible um okay I feel like that's another thing that that's probably why people are sending that question in can I just interrupt this very important conversation to tell you something yeah <laughs> I'm drinking right now. I'm drinking a golden milk latte, and I I went to Sprouts the other day, and I, they had a new blend called um, Golden Mellow, and I've been saving it to drink <laughs> till right now. <laughs> Is there a sound effect button on this Golden on Mellow. this uh, podcast recording platform? <laughs> okay. And actually, my review is that it's really good. I don't typically like. Um, Golden milk lot. milk lattes, but yeah. Anyways, back to what we were saying. I'm taking credit for it, like it's actually my product or something. Yeah, I'm like, thank you for creating this because it's really good. I don't usually like humor. Uh, <laughs> I knew you'd love it. <clears throat> it's hair fine. Just a little. Uh, okay. Caitlin, I know you wanted me to talk about. <laughs> Some very high vocabulary word that <laughs> I can't remember. Con- oh, conditioned think, conditioned thinking. Yeah, conditioned thought patterns. I feel like this is what I would say. Conditioned said. thought pattern. How's that high vocabulary? <laughs> I've never. <No>. Heard it. <laughs> I know what you're talking about, though. After having used it in context, I can. Okay, this is actually something both of us, I feel like, are very passionate about. There's so many things that we share. I know high levels of passion for it, which is really exciting. Everyone needs friends like that. Yeah, we're very lucky. Oh. Thank you, Jesus. Hashtag blood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but 
Um, so you and I both are passionate about, okay, passion. Can we have a better word? Just raw passion. (laughs) Just straight, (laughs) raw, (laughs) stripped. (laughs) And then I'm going to say what it is. People are going to be like, what the (laughs) heck? Oh my gosh. Um, um, here's what it is. Affirmations. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my gosh. Okay. No, but really, affirmations for me, backstory. I had to take like a five year break from goals. I don't know if you ever needed like just to step away entirely from goals, but that was definitely part of my like getting more in touch with my intrinsic motivation and all of that (sighs) people pleasing, like doing things for external approval. Can you just share with people like the difference between internal, intrinsic and extrinsic motivation? Yeah, I can happily. I think so. I talk a lot about um, behaviorist parenting and behaviorist methodology in general, which is um, it is really a philosophy designed to it is a psychological philosophy designed to manipulate the behavior of rodents, dogs, not necessarily humans. They ended up using it for that, and they were like, oh. That's funny. It works for people too, but um, it it's in, basically the whole philosophy is like if you reward the behavior you want to see continue, um, it will usually continue, and if you punish the behavior you wish to see cease, it will usually stop. Um, and that was, I mean, almost like nine times out of ten the case for rats. That's why you can see like if you go to a local science museum or something, you'll see like rat basketball. I don't know if you've ever seen something like this. This is just an Ohio. It, maybe it is. I don't, know that. <laughs> I don't know. I'm like talking like everybody has rat basketball. So like, um, think of not, like it's first. not a very specific thing. <laughs> um, okay. So rat basketball though is a perfect – maybe it stands out to me so much because I'm like the raw passion I have for talking about behaviorism yeah, and conscious living. Absolutely. So I see this rat basketball though where they just hand a Cheerio to the rat for getting the ba- – like the – ball through the hoop and um they just as long as they keep rewarding them with a little cheerio like they keep shooting baskets and they like keep track of i know it's actually so interesting but anyway that's really the root of it all so you might find it interesting that we continue to use this practice on humans on people and we don't really think that it's problematic Um, but what it really does if we use it on children for example by removing our love from them when they are having a hard time or their behavior Mm -hmm. isn't in alignment with what we feel like is appropriate regardless if we Mm -hmm. take a second to question is this developmentally appropriate like does this just make sense for their stage of development their age does this make sense based on the environment the circumstances that they're in, maybe big changes, a new sibling, maybe the marriage dynamic is really yeah. um, struggling and there's tension in your household. Maybe it is like cluttered and chaotic and you haven't opened the blinds in like six years. Um, maybe they yeah. haven't yeah. had super nourishing, nutrient-dense food. I mean, there's all kinds of questions, right, that we could ask right. to investigate behavior. But instead, with the behaviorist model, we look at behavior and we immediately – uh, judge the the child and their character and we're like well that's bad you are bad now right um right. and mostly th- that just means your behavior is making the parent uncomfortable it's usually normal mm-hmm. based on all those questions i just kind of prefaced but typically again we don't have the time to ask those questions utilizing behaviorism because that's not the point we want you to behave a certain right. way when i say to behave a certain way mm-hmm. um like jump mm-hmm. when i say jump and that's what makes you good or bad So our children are conditioned with a couple of things. One, a very, um, like it's a quickly developed based on just biological needs for connection, uh, this understanding of what they need to do to be lovable and worthy of connection Mm -hmm. from you. I mean, as early as six months old, they have done research to show that children are understanding like, okay, my parent doesn't like it when I cry. Um, and that's why they will often like find different ways to self-soothe um, or mm-hmm. shut down, get into that um, mm-hmm. freeze mode, fawn mode. 
it's it, it, that often leads to like later on being titled as disassociation if you're an adult person that needs to like mm-hmm. check out when you're feeling like there's conflict or tension or you're uncomfortable mm-hmm. that probably started in infancy that's again it's getting real deep real fast so if it's overwhelming don't worry it's okay <laughs> um but basically what we condition the child with is that understanding of okay you have to perform for your connection from me um because when they don't line up with what we want, we often uh, punish the behavior we wish to see cease, right? Um, and that, again, trains them just like the rodent. <laughs> like, well, you're not going to get a cheerio if you don't put that ball through the hoop. But likewise, right. when we even use the warm and fuzzy behaviorist uh, extrinsic motivation, so I kind of mentioned the extrinsic motivation without labeling it as that, Um, When we're motivated by an outside source, which might look like, I want want my parent to like love me and connect with me and like Mm me, um, so I should probably do what they tell me to do right when they tell me to do it, Um, or I don't want my parent to take something away from me. I don't want them to say like, for example, if you don't do this, we are leaving the park right now. If you don't say Mm -hmm. sorry, like we are never coming back here again. The child is then motivated, um, not intrinsically understanding, wow, like maybe when I hit her, it really hurt. She's in pain. <laughs> that that stinks. Mm-hmm. Like, dang, I maybe I should talk to her or like, what can I do to make her feel better? There's no, none of that. That would be the intrinsic motivation, right. understanding the moral compass, right. the value system behind what we do, how we behave. The extrinsic motivation teaches children to – not know anything about that, focus on our relationship to them and their value as a person, their, their growing or decreasing value as a person. Um, and so basically when we use this system and the school system relies heavily on behaviorism, um, and at least in America, but really around the world, behaviorism has taken over as the way and people usually use like... Right. Well, when you need to control a bunch mm-hmm. of kids and you have like two adults... Right. It becomes hard and everybody at different developmental stages, learning at different rates and different backgrounds, different home lives. I Mm -hmm. mean, yeah, it's it's almost like we can't – can we look at children? It's a totally different subject, but can it's like (laughs) – I wonder if they ask, like, can you – really yeah. look at children like whole people or do we have to like wrangle yeah. them like cattle I yeah um, what yeah. really works and that's a super interesting conversation but I think this really ties in though yeah I mean like I I want you to fin- because I think it really ties in it doesn't just end and it's not like um avoiding behaviorism I hear this a lot it's like well it just didn't work for me it didn't work for my kid and it's like, what's well, the goal? The, the point is not to have a well-behaved kid, actually, or like whatever, whatever you were thinking, like to have them stop crying. The point is that you and me are having this conversation right now of, that other adult women are listening to. We can't figure out what our intrinsic motivation is. The point is that like we have adults now, we have this mental health crisis now where we can't get in touch with who we are. We're so disconnected from what it means. Like we were talking about, oh, what's that's my soul on fire. People are like, um, I don't know what would like make my mom happy. It's like, <laughs> we're really still there, you know, like in it, or what will make my husband like me, husband proud or of me, other women or, think I'm cool. you know, what will other women think of me? Yeah. We're really, really, really still stuck there. And it's hard to, it's hard to so, recognize that though. I mean, you might not even realize you're doing that, especially if you have very like what people might call little T trauma and you've just been simply raised in a super, as I call it, like the full house or Disney Channel household where it's warm authoritarianism. Uh, there's, they're using mm-hmm. behaviorist tactics, but it's for your own good. It's because I love you that I need to control you and manipulate you and make you feel shame and guilt when you don't do things the way I want you to do them. It's to make you a better person. Um, all the while disregarding that maybe they are a good person and that there are just really like a lot of developmental factors that need to be considered, a lot of environmental factors that need to be considered that influence behavior even in us as adult people. 
I mean, we just don't have somebody other than the inner critical parent to shame us, criticize us, blame, guilt us when we're having a hard moment as people in our adult lives. I mean, maybe we do. We often end up maybe we seek we often end up yeah. marrying uh, someone that mirrors yeah. that and that continues that and makes us continue to work for our lovability in our adult life. Again, a very deep conversation for another time, which is amazing. But I think when it comes down to just the general understanding of extrinsic motivation and intrinsic motivation and goal setting, I think as adult people, you kind of do have to peel back the layers and understand like, oh yeah, like it is hard for me to identify maybe even my own needs, like in my desires. Why? Or like, what do I want and why do I want it? Is it for, is it for this feeling of being good uh, this definition of like however it's been defined in your life culture your household your family mm -hmm. what does it mean to be good does it mean you have to be a doctor does it mean you need to make a certain amount of money does it mean that you need to be very involved in church in whatever denomination or mm -hmm. I mean it could look like a lot of mm -hmm. different things but assessing like are my goals uh, derived from that like sense of identity right what it means to be a good person. Yeah. And and not to say that that's not valid. Like there are things that I do based on my value system that I'm like, wow, like yeah. I I really want to work toward this particular goal. Maybe it's like for example in my marriage, like I have different goals for us to be even more connected, to be, you know, um, to like understand each other on an even like deeper level and really be that amazing like team unit for our children and for a super healthy household mm -hmm. and I guess that's rooted in my some like I guess like a value of like I really want our marriage to just really like stand the test of time and just be beautiful yeah. and lasting yeah. but um at the same time I just feel like that's a perfect example of an intrinsically motivated goal yeah. like I just know how that would feel for my children to see that mm -hmm. and for me and my husband to be seen yeah. in that way safe. and safe. Yeah, I just think that mm -hmm. that's a good example of what an intrinsic goal would look like as opposed to, I don't know, I – for okay, so we both – you've inspired me to like actually take my YouTube channel seriously. It's a good example of like a, a goal that could very well be extrinsically motivated if I was just like – I want to get to a million subscribers. Why? Mm -hmm. Because I want a million subscribers. <laughs> because I'll be cool. <laughs> because that would mean I'm successful at YouTube. Because like it would make me a, a great amount of money. That would mean I'm successful. That I am mm -hmm. good. That I'm hardworking. I mean, insert whatever here. I actually think my husband really struggles with this. I'm like, there is no hierarchy. Uh, there, We are, I just, like, we are all so worthy like it that we don't have to perform for our value and he's like yeah but you do in life like you just do some people yeah. add more value and I'm like I just I just disagree I think that I think that every person has a purpose like just by being here and it doesn't have to look like the weird American dream version of Mm -hmm. success I don't know but that would be it's rooted in his upbringing his behavior upbringing of like okay the more you do the more lovable you are so better get to work <laughs> better get cracking better get those numbers yeah, so up. how do you how do you feel like you distinguish then between because this is something that I know like I think both of us have been asked we put a question sticker up on both our Instagrams too and it's something I know I was asked it's like so then what's the difference between like doing for the sake of doing more for like hustle culture versus I, I do believe we're all here like to contribute meaningful work like that part of what I feel like Tommy <laughs> and my husband Kyle are like very similar this way in that like they are doers like and they um, I don't know I don't think there's actually anything inherently broken about that I feel like that's like part of the way God hardwired us is like don't know like like 
be fruitful, multiply, tend the garden, like cultivate things over generations. It's in there. <laughs> contribute. I don't know. Like how empty would life feel if all we did was rest? Like we've joked about this. Like sometimes we see like slow living influencers or like just, you know, whew, mom accounts on Instagram. <laughs> and it's like they're real after real of just like, frolicking in a field and not that we don't love to frolic um, dude frolic forever but also maybe actually <laughs> edit 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 <laughs> not forever the point we were getting to <laughs> is actually actually don't do that <laughs> no 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 <laughs> listen here's the thing i feel like i can't it wouldn't it wouldn't be um like the last thing I want to do is tell people another set of rules of how they should live their life or like how they should go about setting their goals. I feel like what I'm trying to say is like, I think a lot of women need to hear that there is a way to work even as a stay at home mom that actually contributes to your well being and contributes to the world and like really creates this momentum in your life that feels really rich and you get to have, I don't want to call it like balance. I don't even really know what that means, but you get to have that sense of satisfaction yeah. of like, I'm um, being true to like who I am and, and my purpose. And, and so, yeah, I think just working for the sake of like making more money or just for the sake of buying a house because that's what everyone does when they turn 30 or before they have a kid. So like, gotta get a house, gotta get a house, gotta get a house. Like, I don't know, like what the heck? Like just so that you can have a bunch of debt and a mortgage and... I think that might answer the question. The the question of how, how do we distinguish if something, like what are some of the telltale signs if a goal that you're setting is not from an intrinsically motivated place? I think that if it comes from a place of lack as opposed to a place of like that, like excitement and love and almost like abundance, uh, I kind of like hate that mm -hmm. word sometimes. Like the, like overflowing. That's how I feel with my goals. I'm like, oh my gosh, like yeah. this is coming from this yeah. place of like pouring out, not scraping, if that makes sense. Yes. Like if we're, yes. if your goal it's is, if your energy. goal is, um, I need more money, for example, it's because like, I don't have enough. I don't have enough right now. Mm -hmm. Whereas if your goals are like mm -hmm. rooted in that feeling of I have enough right now, I, I am enough mm -hmm. right now. This, this though makes me come alive. Like I, I, I wish that every day people would just like wake up and do more of that. Like the things that make them feel like just like really in touch with their, their truest, like not put on performative what a self. Great world that would be. You know, like people just like living in living in their true God given essence. I mean, people would be mm -hmm. so confident and so vibrant and beautiful, and he wouldn't have to try so hard. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like maybe the goals, and yeah. I think that the the things that we set out to do, the goals that we set, like would actually come to us so naturally and in this slow living type of way, like. And just with the ease and this assurance, this confidence, knowing that, like, in in whatever timing it's going to happen, that's yeah. when it's going to happen. But that's, like, having it on your heart from that intrinsic place. I'm just going to keep yeah, going. Yeah, like, let's just let's go. Keep trying and enjoy the process. I feel like, for me, that's a big slow living value that I really – has changed my life, for lack of a better cliche term. Yeah. It's just like trusting the process more. And I can't say I always do that. I feel like just the other day I was crying in the shower because a goal of mine, <laughs> listen, <laughs> a goal of mine is to, is to raise my kids in a very different location than the one we're in right now. And it's hard sometimes to know that like, okay, I am making pro pro progress, but also my child's childhood is happening right now. <laughs> And they're going to have memories of this, and it's not what I pictured. And, and I know someday I will get that goal, but I don't know when the timing will be right. And I just like surrendering to that and trusting the process and also, like you said, like being grateful for the ordinary every day 
even while it's not all perfect. I think slow living is like one of those just, I don't know if I should call it like a lifestyle shift or an I think it's a mindset shift. Yeah, a mindset shift, you're right, where I'm, I'm a little more conscious to be like, no, like it's just not ripe quite yet like it in 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 good time I don't want to rush it I've done that enough in my life to be like that wasn't worth it I don't I don't want to rush that (laughs) yeah when it's not the right time again Um, but but I was gonna say there's also that aspect of like listening to your intuition and listening to your heart like like and the feelings that you're experiencing and understanding like okay, like, what is it? Like, what is it that's really making me feel this way? And maybe even asking yourself, Mm -hmm. like, do I have it in my mind? Have I, have I cultivated this idea of what the perfect childhood is and what the perfect mom is that provides the perfect childhood? And Mm -hmm. am I not living up to that? Do I feel disappointed there? Do I feel unworthy, like not enough or like I'm not doing enough? I mean, I think it's important to ask yourself those questions in the season when you aren't quite in this perfect circumstance. I mean, I think you would tell me if I said the same thing. And now we're kind of just talking as friends. But I think you would tell me, like, first of all, you'd be like, but you are, like, they're having the most amazing childhood. And then you'd be like, but I don't want to invalidate your experience. (laughs) I know we would talk to each other the exact same way. (laughs) Um, but also I just think, I don't know, you would probably be like, hmm, well, like what's happening right now though? Like, man, like savor, romanticize. I just think that, Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think that it's so interesting to dive a little bit deeper and unravel the layers. I don't know. Seeing your kids on the lawn with their skateboards, I just thought like, man, that is such a cool like they're just they're just having the they're the so coolest sweet. life. I don't know. Even simple days like going to the San Diego Aww. Zoo. I'm just like, they are just having like the best life. And honestly, I know that we uh, talked a little or we before the episode, there was that question about, um, oh shoot, like how how to do this and parent consciously. And I think that. One thing that's really important is authenticity. Like your kids really want to see you like being yourself, like being like frustrated or disappointed or like wanting something else or like being ready for something else, being ready for a shift. They want to like, I, th- I think that's also another beautiful aspect of a really like, in my opinion, perfect childhood parents that are like totally themselves and like, I don't know, yeah. totally aware of what they want and like present yeah. still I think that I think you can be grateful and be like man I'm I'm ready for something new I'm ready for my dream like mm-hmm. that that's coming yeah yeah and then also you're like there's there's that balance too of like there does come a point where you're like it's time to go for it it's actually time <laughs> to like not romanticize this life anymore and like step into the maybe you're getting I'm closer to that, that. Maybe I'm feeling the energy. Yeah, I think you're starting to feel a shift, which is very exciting. It's very exciting. Okay, can we get into some rapid fire questions? Because there are some really good ones in here, and I want to be able to answer some of them. Rapid fire on a rapid rapid fire on a slow living (laughs) podcast is probably like that's probably the wrong. (laughs) (laughs) You know what? It's fine. It's fine. (laughs) Rolling with it. Okay. Caitlin? Yes, Maddie. Madison. (laughs) Madison. Madison. Okay, Kate, no. Do you feel like it is possible to parent your children consciously and live a slow life while working a nine-to-five? I think so. I think that it's possible to do anything consciously. I think that, unfortunately, there's an aspect of this that I think a lot of people feel very defeated by kind of going back to what you said, oh, that just didn't work for me. I think that a lot of people in this circumstance might say something like that um, just as a result of being exhausted or maybe feeling a little disconnected from their children throughout their workday, maybe disconnected from their own needs, goodness. 
um, needs for just being outside. Gosh, my own husband, I, he just rearranged yeah. his office today and was like, look, I made it so that my back isn't to the window so I can see outside. And I, God I know bless. I'm just like, sweet Tommy, my goodness. Like I want to break down the whole that. wall and like <laughs> I'm ready to out of this put in one of those like garage door walls that like people yep. can just like yes. open in the nice, on the nice, beautiful day. I will burn this building I, to the that's ground how I really, and there will be an outdoor That's how I space. felt. And then I was like, this is like a wonderful, beautiful step of awareness that he was like making. That so I was really like, oh, that's so amazing. And he shared it with you. He's like, look. Oh, yeah. You know how like when you're a kid and you rearrange your room and show your parents like, mom, yeah. look, I moved my desk. Yeah, that's how it felt in a way. Um, so that. sweet. But I think that you can raise your children con consciously. I think you can implement slow living when working a nine to five. If we were to say no, what in the world? I mean, like <laughs> – what like no you're exempt like you can't and that's kind of what why I think Sorry. that's why we sometimes feel a little bit of like I get into my ego sometimes when I see those like influencer posts uh, reels of like I I yeah, chose I this the I chose the soft yeah. life and I chose my children or I chose uh, mm -hmm. uh this and that and so I could wear dresses and p do picnics and stuff and I'm like yeah well I, I love those I things too. Kids, I love too. that. Yeah. I love that for you. I think that's beautiful and I'm so happy for you. At the same time, yeah. um, I'm so happy. For you. <laughs> I'm, I actually meant to though. No, I know you actually are. <laughs> um, but I was just but, sharing that maybe my feelings are not as pure as Caitlin. <laughs> You are a way better Stop. person. Stop. So, but I really feel like sometimes though when I see, it's probably because I talk about parenting, you know, you have to be like, you have to have like opened your heart times a million, in my opinion, to share about conscious parenting and really want to help people. Because like if yeah. you, you are, like, you like I always so say, like, like you, won't, you catch more flies with honey. Like I, if yeah. I, if I didn't genuinely have like a sweeter outlook on people and a compassionate perspective. I would just be turning people off left and right. Yeah. I mean, I already do, and I try to be so compassionate. And they're still like, you like think you're, you're better than me? I'm like, what? Oh. I'm trying so hard to not come off like that. I, I don't know guys, how. Caitlin does not. I do not. Like so, but when I see some of those posts, I'm like, okay. And even, even certain things when it comes to, like, nourishment, I see certain things shared, and I'm like, how does that apply to the modern – I hate, that's such a weird term, the modern mom. But like, if I look at the general statistics of what the average woman is living like in America, what she needs to do, how she needs to also provide probably, like, mm -hmm. I, I feel so like discouraged for them. I'm like, this messaging would probably make me feel like crap if I was in that scenario where I was like, I have to go to work. Like, and that's the kind of work that I have to do. And I see a lot of people saying, because I had that mindset. And then again, I'm in my ego, like reading the comments, looking for the drama. <laughs> but I, I did read some comments that are like, you don't have to do, like, you don't have to leave your kids to work nowadays. You can be more creative than that. And I disagree. I don't think everybody can do the work that we do um, in the way that we do it in a way that's going to be super financially rewarding. I just, I think that that goes with like certain giftings from God. It's like some people are just like, like Tommy would have no desire to start a YouTube channel, yeah. nor would it be successful. That's the thing. I think everyone did, is would just, just called. Yeah. And I don't know if everybody We're all called a different thing. Yeah, and I don't know about the setting of like a nine to five in a cubicle or an office. Like I don't, I don't know if that's any of our calling necessarily. But maybe. Right. But again, that's like a totally different thing. And I just don't want anyone to feel shamed or judged for living that lifestyle. Um, and I also just think it's a moot point. You can you can in implement a more conscious lifestyle, no matter what you do. It might cause you to say, mm -hmm. I should move my freaking desk. I don't even see the sun. Yeah. What is wrong here? That's living yeah. more consciously, saying like, why do I do what I do? Why do I feel how I feel? And and how can I take personal responsibility and make adjustments to live in a more aligned way um, with our biological design and also just like with what 
is feeling good intuitively. I think that when it comes to raising our children more consciously, it's the only way. I think you can absolutely feel like, okay, I'll resort to behaviors measures because um, when I when I it's that happens when people say it doesn't work. It's because they have a different goal in mind. Their goal is still based in control, um, not relationship. Mm -hmm. If you want an ownership control dynamic where your children um, operate out of fear and you also, surprise, are operating out of fear, you're scared that your kids are bad, you're scared that you're going to be a bad mom, that people are going to look at you like a bad mom. You're oh, yeah. I think parenting itself is intrinsic or sorry extrinsic now it's like a performance yes yeah like playing the role and not being in relationship but if yeah if you have a nine to five job I mean I think that if anything if you were to implement more conscious living principles conscious parenting principles slow living principles my goodness you could make having a nine to five job just like so fruitful and rewarding and connected you might really cherish the time with your children because it is more limited you might really savor certain aspects of your work day because they feel a little bit better even little details like seeing your window instead of it being at your back or yeah. um yeah. lunchtime with like coworkers, or what you packed or what your wife packed for you or whatever like I think you might start to notice all the little details that make your day so beautiful and yeah. And all the little moments with your family that are really like even almost like more heightened level of special because you really – like I know that I hear this from my husband who works a nine-to-five job. Like I just look forward so much to coming home and I just, you know, feel like I'm missing out on so much all the time. And again, yeah. as he continues on his journey of like a more conscious lifestyle, I think it gets harder for him to rationalize – the lifestyle of a nine yeah. to five because he's yeah. seeing hmm I see my wife doing other things that produce an income she's with our family 24 mm -hmm. 7 and mm -hmm. um just happy you know happy go lucky little yeah. girl frolicking about <laughs> um while she sets the goals and has the picnics at the same time but I think that he That's sees that and he's like maybe I don't have to just automatically say like well I have to do this job because like yeah. that's how you make the money is like I have options and I yeah. can give myself um, like bring back that personal responsibility. So I don't know if that answers the question I in a million agree. ways or none. <laughs> no, I think it's I think it's beautiful. I think for me, I feel like it goes one of two ways and I am going to read into this a little. But I feel like the thing underneath the thing with can I do slow living or raise my kids intentionally live the way I want to with a nine to five. It's like, okay, so I feel like you're either looking for permission to be like, no, I, I know I'm called to this nine to five, but it's so different from the way you live. Like, is that okay? Is it okay that it looks so, and to, of course, my answer, of course. Yeah. Oh my yes. gosh. Do what you're called to and implement rest and uh, connectedness in your relationships and with yourself and all these different self-care things and goals like wonderful but the only the other thing I see with this is like maybe it's like you said like you're actually feeling like you know what the, the more in alignment I get with myself and my goals and the more I rest and kind of process the more I'm like this doesn't fit for me this job mm -hmm. And that has to be like really overwhelming for someone to come to a realization of, of like, whoa, it's going to be like, this is a lot more of a lifestyle shift than I thought it was going to be when I discovered minimalism or, you know, conscious parenting or whatever. And is that okay? Like, is it okay that I'm feeling like that? And I think, again, like, yes, I think that is also normal. And we all have those moments of like, we were kind of, talking about earlier of like okay whoa I'm getting to the edge of like this used to be the room where I everyone was smarter than me and like I had so much to learn and now it's time for me to leave and like go to a different room and learn something new entirely and that's scary but I just want to be an encouragement to say like I think that there has never been like a better time in the history of the world to be someone that goes after a non-traditional job and makes a wonderful income for their family at it. I think there's 
a limitless amount of ways to do it. And like if we can do it, <laughs> I think anyone could do yeah. it. It's just um, really I think the first step is, is stripping away all that excess and getting into true alignment of like who am I and do I really trust myself? Like do, can I trust myself without all the approval, with the, maybe without the approval of a boss or without having that elevator pitch to tell people or being age 32 and starting over like that's so scary when you've built up your resume for years and then all of a sudden you walk away from it because you're like I want to be with my kids like and I'm going to do this crazy thing I'm going to start a YouTube channel like at 30 whatever you know I just think maybe people need to hear that too of like no actually we're like just like you like and and maybe it's not a YouTube channel but there's like you do our bond like there's so many ways yeah that you could um do work that you feel is in alignment with your values and kind of free up your um yeah. life to be more more meaningful yeah i completely agree with everything you say okay let's go to let's go to another one <laughs> was that rapid fire it, that was like stuff. 10 minutes <laughs> i know okay <laughs> i think i should have just been like yes next Let's try that. Let's see how quickly we can answer. Well, I think people one. need context. Let me pick. You need. Oh, yeah, I know. Oh, someone just says, I love you and I need this. Thank you. <laughs> we did that one so quick. Love you, too. We actually need you, too. I mean, if nobody's listening to this. I mean, Dude, it, it, I would do. say that it's it doesn't matter if it, no one listens to it because of what we get out of it. But I mean, obviously, obviously, so we us. want the podcast to grow. I want. I would love for more people to listen to Maddie. So. We, the goals. Yes, it's fine. <laughs> but we need you too. Okay, let me, let, I'm trying to think of one that's easy and these are all like really deep questions. Go. Okay, this one, maybe this is a little easier. I work from home. I struggle to switch from mom mode to work mode. Any tips? Yes. First tip would be having a specific environment that you are in work mode making that like sort of that space that you can uh, basically take this moment after like you're done working, maybe a five minute uh, yeah. intermission, like seventh inning stretch, have a little small routine like, okay, I'm basically resetting myself. I actually do this with my husband when he comes home from that nine to five. We do that dramatic power hug of like heart to heart. Let me reset your nervous system so that it's at our pace oh, of that. like, we're home now. You don't for seven minutes mm, no that's a really long time at least 23 seconds okay. though <laughs> it's like i think i haven't given my husband a seven minute hug wow that'd be amazing um no over. i said i don't know why seven minutes okay i like but, seven minutes but no but. it's it's usually like i say like at least 20 to 30 seconds it has to be okay okay and um yeah we just i want to implement yeah this. it's a good way to literally reset his nervous system so that he's at the pace of mm -hmm. our household where me and the kids are operating um and yeah. or the kids and I are operating <laughs> and we are just uh, more in sync like okay now you don't have to be on like work on and you can just be here in the present with us so I think having a little something something in place for yourself um where you yeah. kind of even do that little mini reset is really important I think it makes a huge difference when we don't do it and I noticed that Tommy is like weirdly rapidly walking around the house like <laughs> at such a strange pace that feels so like intense to me okay. and I'm like are you <laughs> oh, okay again like the hyper vigilance from my childhood like gotta check in make sure he's not upset about something or bothered by something and then I'm like he's literally just working like he's at work pace still and I'm like oh yeah we have to do our power hug so yeah I think having a little reset button and that could be I know what he needs. That could be like a Power four, out. seven, eight breathing is my favorite. I have like EFT tapping, um, recording. I love your EFT tapping. You could tapping. use that. Those of you that don't know, I'm gonna put in the description. Caitlin has these incredible little like ten minute downloads. Maddie named them. She just walks you through they should be so much more than ten dollars, let me tell you. So before I convince her to up the price, you should get them all. <laughs> They're incredible. I have the EFT tapping. She even has one that's talk through a tantrum. So when you are feeling that whole like <gasps> moment, 
you get to have like the most peaceful girlfriend just like hop in with you and just it's good. it's like a therapy session and it's only like what 15 minutes long yeah. and you can just listen to it yeah a hundred percent recommend thank you maddie yeah completely so unbiased. you could use that though <laughs> Oh, but you could you could even Good. record your own. I recommend that too. If if you're somebody that's like, man, I don't feel like using the Mellow Mamas recording or whatever, that's fine too. You could even go on YouTube. I don't know, like find something that's gonna help you just reset your nervous system and get you into just mom mode. Um, and maybe okay, one last thing. Uh, have a rhythm for like what you do immediately after work mode because I know myself and mm. sometimes we go right from work mode in our actual like business into work mom mode doing like the tasks and things so this goes back to what we started with you know like how some rest is not passive setting yourself up for success so that right when you're done working you can go right into like immersed playtime having like maybe at home story time or going right out into nature would be my number one recommendation like let's all go for a walk mommy is done we are done with work right now mm -hmm. um, and we are going into a state of play, that state of like lightheartedness, that state of presence, especially in nature is just yeah. perfect because you're like forced to be in a regulated state in terms of your nervous system. So it's almost yeah, like, I feel like that's the per that's like such a good, yeah. Thing. So I think like having a rhythm of, okay, work is done. What's the next thing that we always do. I think walk is a perfect thing. Even if you live in a cold place like me, like where we have real winter, like bundle up, just know like that's what we're doing next yeah. or whatever activity you guys like doing. Do you only work for one part of the day? And a like, is it a specific uh, time? Typically, like, when Romy's napping, that's when I'll work. Um, so it's, you know, sometimes it's longer, sometimes it's shorter. Um, every Wednesday night, I do a little call with my team, um, and that's really fun. I think, yeah, it's pretty, pretty consistent, like, just for that little pocket of time. And then I consider, yeah. you know, if I make content or something, like, obviously um that'll be like a different stretch of time but it's usually in like pockets of my day like if I share on my Instagram okay. story it's like oh here's what we're doing I was just telling you that like I'll just take a quick yeah. picture of it or a video of it and then I'm like that's technically working <laughs> but it's more like layered right. in integrated right. um I don't really right. necessarily have a super finite work schedule it's very it's usually just okay. like I rely on nap time and then yeah. If I'm lucky, I think moving forward, I might have my mom help me for like a couple of hours as I get back on into yeah. like the YouTube yeah. right. channel YouTube creation. Stuff. But I feel like I could also do that like at nighttime, like that might be super cozy and mm -hmm. relaxed. I don't know. Whatever feels good. I just freak out about the blue light at night oh, because I so used to true. do night and now I'm like, oh, I'm trying to get away from the blue light. But I'll say my kids were, okay, so my first child was a contact napper strictly contact napper like mouth boob in mouth <laughs> exclusively and so I got I did absolutely nothing other than breastfeed but then my son took naps but we've never had like a nap schedule where yeah to be honest it's something that just this year we're getting much better at it's just having like a very loose family schedule where I feel like that is kind of creating we haven't really discussed it yet, but like that boundary for the feminine energy to kind of flow in. I've been so anti having a schedule for our family because it just feels so restricting. But what I'm finding is like, oh, actually, I'm not like no one's setting the schedule but me and Kyle. And like, it's actually quite freeing because now I feel like, oh, okay, I have this urge to go work right now, but I actually had my work time this morning. And every time I feel the urge, it's actually a sense of satisfaction of like, oh, huh, I'm actually done for the day. Like, this feels great. I can enjoy what I'm doing right now in the present even more. Or like the cleaning thing, for instance, if I have a specific routine in the morning where I know I make my bed or the nighttime routine where you make sure the kitchen is clean, it, there's just not that sense of like, oh, what should I be doing right now? And you feel like you have to be somewhere else whenever you're with your kids or even when you're working, you feel like, oh, I should be with my kids right yeah. now, though. There's really, it's very, I guess, safe feeling to have that schedule for me, which I can't believe I'm saying. Yeah, but I feel the same way, though. 
Oh, switch. I probably, I think I learned it from you, so. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> How to have goals without grinding. Oh, I hate, I hate the word grinding. Um, I, so I think that. How do you feel about the term mom boss? Who? Who? I mean, I guess I shouldn't even be like offended by it. I, it's just like. I'm sorry. Disregard that. Keep going. I feel like it's a very specific demographic of people that cultivated it that is, and like let hot. it let it ride and are like into it. it sounds judgmental. Okay. It's I'm not sorry. okay. I'm sorry to the mom. Boss. Not okay. Yeah. It's, but yeah. Let me just say it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but like at the same hey, time, maybe anyways. it is like yes, you are a boss. Like you, but I just feel like it feels so masculine. Like. <laughs> It does. I'm a boss. I'm going to boss you around. I don't know. Even like it just makes me feel uncomfortable. So I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm sorry. I said one time that I – I I put that right on one you. One time so I said that I don't like the – when people say kiddos. And I don't know why it gives me the ick, but it does. And people got so upset. They are like, well, what else yeah. are you supposed you to say? can't say that, Caitlin. <laughs> don't. I was like, I don't know. I'm sorry. Don't you, you can dare say kiddos. Offend people Dang like it. that. You can totally say it. It's fine. That's, that's so I'm offensive. not upset. I don't know. I'm not okay. Anyway, what was the question? How how do we not grind? How do we work without grinding. Grinding away. Maybe like maybe because we haven't talked about it yet. Could you discuss like feminine and masculine energy and like how do we how do we how do we look at those? With goal setting, because I feel like that's maybe what this question is yeah, getting at. Yeah, such a hard, such a hard big one because like I feel like we could have a whole podcast episode just on that and like figuring it out, navigating it. I think that we both, Maddie and I, I like to avoid a lot of dogma and like it's got to be extreme this way or that way and like this is what it is. I, so I have interpreted – loosely like the feminine to be just the receiving and the masculine to um be the opposite of that what's the opposite of that (laughs) just the doing Doing? yeah the doing the um and I think that I when I was first introduced to this concept of you know I was really abruptly thrown into the whole like feminine masculine energy conversation because someone was like you're in your masculine all the time and I was um I guess like that's so funny I I think I just felt I felt like are you calling me like manly am I a man like what how how I wonder how I'm in my masculine and that very like in up in your head thought thinking justifying is masculine energy I guess um from what I've understood and so I, I got there and then I was like – but you know one thing I will toot my horn about is that like it's pretty hard to actually offend me. Like I – I don't know. I, so when she said that, I was like, oh, no. Like am I like super masculine? I didn't know that. <laughs> Gosh. like, And I was thinking about it and then I was like, maybe I am. Maybe there's something. Could that – could that Yeah, could right. that be okay? And I – um. For those, like a lot of people listening probably don't know anything about me. And I was a single mom for a few years. And before that, I was in a pretty tumultuous, scary um, relationship. And anyway, basically, I definitely was in my masculine. I was in survival mode, trying mm-hmm. to protect myself mm-hmm. and my son, trying to protect our life and, and provide as well. Those are all, yeah. that's all masculine energy, baby. So um, when I was able to really be vulnerable, like 30 seconds after she asked me that and say, well, how could that be so? Like, how could that be true? Um, what what could she possibly be picking up on or like telling me about? Those are the things that came to mind. And I um, so quickly was like, oh, okay, like I just kind of like wanted to hug myself, like my my past yeah. self and my current self, and I was yeah. like, oh, like I'm so sorry you had to operate there. And I also yeah. then was like, and I'm so excited for you that you were able to maintain so much of your feminine uh, throughout such mm-hmm. an intense time. Like I gave myself a lot of grace, and I sound insane. Like I talk to myself 
Um, but I really kind of did. I was like, oh, you know, like I'll be friendly to myself about this. I think she's right in some ways. Yeah. And I think that in other ways, I think that I definitely um, have carried myself with a lot of feminine energy and um, especially because like a lot of what she was referring to was work related. And I was able to think about the feminine energy that I put into my work, like where it's really where it's all rooted from. And that is like this sort of like beautiful creative energy. Um, yeah. It almost feels sort of like maternal. Like I, I really like want to love and nurture parents, like help them. Oh, hold on. Hmm. Um, I really want to help them. Sorry, I was getting a phone call. <laughs> help them to understand like that doing that harder work that comes with conscious parenting is – is scary yeah. sometimes and is hard and I don't know everything that I, I've done and created hasn't been from a place of like performance and doing right. necessarily it's been from this like place of just like such deep love and admiration for people everywhere that want to listen to the work that I share um so I so a hard question to answer, like, you know, let's talk, what is the feminine energy? What is the masculine? And I think that sometimes for me, and I've talked about this to you, Maddie, like just in our own conversations that, um, I think that sometimes it's tricky for me to, and I think that's maybe it's hard for a lot of people listening to figure out like, where is yeah, the line? So. Like, what does it mean to be in your feminine? Do you have to just be frolicking all day, just receiving, receiving? And, and I find mm -hmm. it hard too, as a mother, which is the most, I, I mean, it's like feminine, as feminine as it gets, like to have a baby, bring life into the world and nurture a baby. But that's technically yeah. giving all day, you know? So sometimes I'm like, yeah. well, is, is that masculine? Is that feminine? Or does it depend on what we're what our intentions are behind the giving or like, you know, so I don't know, maybe you're a better person to, to set the stage. Um, but I guess like, I, I don't know. I think that that's part of my answer for now. I love that answer because I, well, first of all, I have so much respect for you in your journey of motherhood. Like, I think it's amazing how you, and I mean, what you've had to walk through is just like, I can't imagine it. And, but it makes you the perfect person to do the work you're doing. I think so too. Thank and you. really have the empathy for every mother out there. Um, and when I said, I think so too, I don't think I'm the perfect person. I, <laughs> I'm saying uh, it's coming from a place of like when I've struggled with my circumstance, I always tell myself, like, this will help me. This will help mm -hmm. me help other people. Like, this experience will help me understand on a deeper you level. You just trust it. You trust the process. Yeah. So I don't. I don't. I don't think I'm. I don't think I'm like this amazing whatever. Well, but I, I just. I, I just was that. saying that. Like I think that's what I have told myself for many years. Like that ha happened, mm -hmm. and it it serves me because I I can just deeply understand and empathize and connect with anybody really. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that. I don't know. It, yeah. So anyway, I just had to clarify that. I don't want people being like, wow. <laughs> well, no, she, she is. Perfect. Wow. She really just thinks she's amazing. I don't think people are I thinking, don't know. Thank you. Um, I mean, my opinion I, about the how do you stay in your feminine energy, I feel like you don't have to try. Like if you're – if you are ever feeling like, oh, wait, what can I look at my approved eat and don't eat foods again? Rather than like, what are you hungry for? Why don't we just, why don't we do that? We like just trust ourselves. Um, I think, yeah, that's just like, that's our culture now. And we're always looking at like across the table. I mean, food's just the perfect example of this, but we're like always looking across the table at like, oh, if only you knew that that was harming your endocrine system. <laughs> yeah, that was like, I'm equipped with this knowledge. <laughs> but like, unfortunately, you are not. And um, I feel like I get so many vibes of that with the feminine energy thing now. That's just like, well, here's what it means to be feminine. And you're really like that the conversation that you had with that, I'm sure, well-meaning friend. But I'm just like, well, <clears throat> just say so you no. Know. 
and you're masculine. And I would have been like, yeah, heck yeah, I am. <laughs> like, I'm providing for my family, my child, and I'm also nurturing him and mothering him and doing this creative endeavor. Like, I think that one of my favorite um, people to listen to on this topic, I'll have to just link her in the description because I don't know how to pronounce her first name, but she has lots of videos about how like important embracing your masculine energy as a woman is and like ha getting in touch with it having healthy outlets for it is to like really embracing your feminine like if you just go all or nothing on one like that's when you're um not gonna just like be your best self i guess that's what my takeaway from it is which i really liked because yeah, if we're constantly so in fear, like, oh my gosh, yeah, but like goals, like, and we're just overthinking it and thinking, oh, is that, but is that masculine if I start a business? No, like, no, it's not. It's perfectly, I don't know, it's perfectly exactly what your creator made you to do as a woman. It also bring life into the world with children, like, and does it need to be like, oh, but I, like, yeah, just like thinking about like, yeah, as a mother, I'm giving, especially a brand new mother, you're like, you give everything to this baby. And so does that mean you're not feminine? No. Like, no. Yeah. I think I, so. I think that something too that comes up for me in this conversation too is it's, it all comes back to that foundation, that mindset shift that we've been discussing this whole episode. You could start a business and absolutely be operating like with no feminine energy, you could be grinding away just like, and I think that is this, right. this question, right. you know, you could, it's just a mindset. Yeah, shift. You could be like working tirelessly for, for empty goals that are built on scarcity. Mm -hmm. Like, Oh, I don't have enough and I've got to do more and I'm not enough. And if I just reach this level right. or if I get this yes. office or if I get this amount of money or followers, then, then I'll, that'll be good. Like then I'll be successful. Well, first of all, those never end. Like that's never, it's never enough. Like that song. Um, mm -hmm. but I think, yeah, I think that if, I don't know, like the, the feminine and masculine, like you're saying, it's just so important for us to have both and operate in a healthy way with both. I, I don't know. I think that it is just in our nature though, as women to be in our feminine and it is more like, like stop thinking so much about trying to be more feminine and just be yourself. And there it is, you know, just lean in, yeah. just lean in, just relax for a second. Goodness. Yeah, I feel like what's truly feminine for me is like, okay, we're so intuitive. And I think I know when there's like a next right thing that God is calling me to, whether that's like, hey, sit down with Caitlin, record your dang podcast and just launch it. You know, like that <laughs> has been on my heart. I'm just to be honest. It, it, about the podcast in general for so long and then like I overthink it and want it to be perfect and I'm like no but let me do like four other things first but if I just surrendered and was like okay launch it you know which is how I started my whole dang YouTube channel um I feel like that's really the feminine it's just like surrendering to that like pull when you feel that creative intuitive I think we do this as mothers too. And like men don't have this when you're just like, my husband will ask me now because he just knows that I have this like sense about people. He'll be like, so, you know, if we're going to rent a house now, like when we first moved to this house, he's like, how'd you feel about that guy? You know, which is like so crazy for my husband. <laughs> it's taken us eight years of marriage for him to be like, let me just actually get a vibe check from my wife real quick because <laughs> that's going to be important. It's so amazing. Um, but yeah, I feel like our intuition is so strong. And, and yeah, I don't know if it's all men, but my husband certainly doesn't have that. And it's just something uniquely feminine that we offer, I think, to the world. And so like not just to my husband, but if I'm like, oh, yeah, that's, I, I love it. Like it feels so good or like, whatever. Or just like, oh, I can't explain it, but like, no. Like, feels off. Something's off. We can't hang out. No. Or like, yeah, we can't do that particular deal or whatever. Work with that company. I don't know why, but we just can't. Um, yeah, to so like lean into that. But I guess my point is just like um, 
it's something I want to do more is just like when I feel called to something, when my intuition feels just like sparked, that I will just follow that. And sure, it might mean like doing a bit of work, but I still believe that that's, um, you know, going in the flow with my feminine energy. I don't know. Um, ah, this might really get dicey, but when I think about the Proverbs 31 woman, I was like just reading this Bible passage the other day and it gave me so much encouragement because in the past I feel like, I don't know, I've had mixed feelings about, about the Proverbs 31 woman, but as I read it the other morning, I was like, dude, this woman is like, this woman's tending fields of linen, like flax. She's investing in properties. She's like, I'm assuming, raising children. Um, it just, it was amazing to me, like all the different endeavors that she was involved in in a day. And I was like, homegirl is not just like cooking in an apron. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Like, please don't hear that. It's just that I think there's so many different ways to be a woman. Well, and it's also um, that. And what God calls us to. Yeah, I think that the main thing where you're like it's not just that it's this and it doesn't not everything has to be so exclusive and I think that in of itself is the masculine energy trying to set the the parameters this is what it looks like this is what it sounds like and women are just not we are like infinite we we can do so much and 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 I think that we were talking about this yesterday like we really bring life not just Mm -hmm. through like having babies. There are so many women that cannot have babies that are so, they bring life to their home by making it like just that, that extra like feminine touch, like they make it a home or, you know, just Mm -hmm. beautifying things, making, and even just the simplest ways. um, I just think that we really do bring life and we, we are on the receiving end, like when we're really resting in that feminine energy. But I think that some of the time that I've been able to like really feel like I'm, wow, like I'm, I don't know, like I'm steeped in the feminine. Like I am just like re- receiving this like feeling of like restfulness or um, ease and flow. I'm editing a YouTube video or like yeah. recording yeah. this podcast it's very life-giving mm-hmm. and it doesn't feel like mm-hmm. and even some people say like well educating is in the masculine and I'm like oh, man it's so interesting because I feel like so called to do that I just it is so yeah. life-giving to me yeah. it feels I disagree yeah it just feels very it feels <laughs> very um feels very like rewarding and like nourishing to my yeah. soul mm-hmm. um yeah. and so I just think yeah I, I don't know I think that they just there's ebbs and flows and I think it does come back to what you were saying just leaning into what what do you feel in your body like what feels good and doing that so that's how you can work without mm-hmm. grinding 30 minutes later our rapid yeah. fire how we do how we doing our <laughs> rapid fire just leaning in what feels good and if something doesn't feel good, stop. Just just cut yourself off. Go for that walk. <laughs> okay, yeah. next, next, next question. I need to hear that too. Okay, Caitlin, let's do like two more because we're approaching like multiple hours. Oh my gosh. Are we not? Yeah, we'll wrap this up. We we'll wrap this up. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to quickly. <laughs> and on that note, well, we do everything so quickly. <laughs> oh. It's a... It's a beautiful okay. thing, but I feel like it's also, <laughs> I mean, hey, if you're here listening, then we know you, you're into it. You made it. But I, th- I mean, you know, we they're into you. it. It's like, <laughs> if you're a slow living person, you're like, I'll listen. I'll come back to this. I've got nothing but <laughs> right, time. Take your time. <laughs> what a great job yeah. we get to have. Oh, okay. No, really. Let's, can, do, how do you feel? Can we do two more yeah, questions? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Would you tell me? Yeah, I would tell you. No, I'm completely I, That would that'd be such a hilarious end to the episode. <laughs> Actually, no. No. Um, no. I'm burnt out. Completely All right. Burnt bye, guys. Oh, I love this so much. I'm going to be on such a high for the rest of the day for this, from this. Okay. So tips for aligning with values. Oh, this is a deep one, Caitlin. Yeah. Let's see how quickly we can okay. do this. Tips for aligning with values while struggling with mental health. Okay, I'll go first. 
I feel like it goes back to, um, gosh, I will, Johan Hari, that's who I'm going to recommend. He has a book called Lost Connections, and it's about anxiety and depression and how um, he traveled the world, like, studying, I want to say, like, 70 different cultures about anxiety and depression and, like, what are the root causes. And what I took away from that book was, like, when we are in a state of depression or anxiety, it's typically because something about our lives or our environment is off, like deeply off. And so I think aligning, like just acknowledging that and then being like, wait, so my pain isn't just a symptom. I'm not broken. It makes sense. My pain makes sense. Maybe it's trying to tell me something and I should listen, you know, like I'm not broken. So I would say that if you're going to align with your values, like tune into the pain. Don't be afraid of the pain. Let it speak what it needs to speak to you. There you go. That's my rapid fire answer. And I would just say, like, I would stamp it with a approval. Mellow Mama approved. Um, yeah, I mean, that's exactly what my response would have been. So <laughs> it's it just Love listening it. to listening to the pain and getting curious about what you're experiencing in terms of your mental health. Maybe it's not necessarily depression, but if you're just feeling anxious, yeah. asking yourself, like, mm -hmm. What am I afraid of? What is the worst possible s scenario here? Okay. And then what? You know, I, and some people can get into like catastrophizing mode and then they're like, that's not helpful. Yeah. Okay. I don't, I don't want to do that. Imagine the worst case mm -hmm. scenario. But I think that if that's you, I think it's important to peel back the layers and evaluate mm -hmm. your childhood and adolescent experience. Um, figure out, you know, it's so interesting. I don't know. When it comes to like the value aspect of that question, though, I mean, it just kind of depends on what it is that you're implementing in your life that's not in alignment with your values. Maybe that is causing, mm -hmm. just like Maybe you you were causing. saying. I mean, that's why that would be my answer. I feel like once you recognize like, wait, maybe <laughs> the effect is the cause, not like, oh, yeah. something's just wrong yeah. with me. It's like, well... Yeah. Maybe because you feel out of alignment with your values, mm -hmm. you're feeling that way. So what can we right, shift? Right. What are the things that we can take a look at and adjust right now? I also feel like when it comes to mental health, and this is uh, obviously in no, no way, shape, or form like uh, diminishing anybody's experience, their emotional experience right now, their circumstances, we already kind of barely yeah. brushed on the yeah. fact that like I have totally been there I've been in situations where I was like wow I feel like this is so out of my control although I take yeah. personal responsibility for being in certain circumstances it I felt very helpless at times and I I remember being like well what is in my control like what can I take control of mm -hmm. and also like what are the things that could might be um influencing how I feel that have nothing to do with really like the the big picture of like changing this circumstance. Like, did I eat today? Did I eat enough? What did I eat? Did I open the blinds? Did I get time in nature? Yeah. Have I yeah. have I checked to see if I'm breathing today? Like and taking yeah. a moment. Yeah. What am I listening to? Whether it's music. Right. What am I, what am I looking at? at? Who am I surrounding myself yeah, by? Yeah, just noticing what you're consuming yeah. too and how that could be impacting your mental state is something that I think is really grossly overlooked people will will just diagnose themselves as the problem it's a character flaw mm -hmm. it's a i'm yeah it's the way yeah. i'm designed it's just uh, yeah and i'm like oh my gosh there are just so many factors to be considered before yeah. you could ever make a statement like that like you are right. not broken right. yeah yeah okay next question yeah. <laughs> we nailed it okay this is the last one and i think um this will be interesting to hear your answer about Okay, how to set goals with my kids for what they need to achieve and learn, et cetera? Well, that's a really interesting question. I don't, I don't know if I've ever done that because I definitely feel like my goal for my, my children, and this is just my personal experience and just what – this is what matters to me is really – and it's very, actually been very difficult for me to have this perspective now that my son – my son attends school – um, and it's a challenging thing for me because my main goal is just for my children to be like immersed in nature 
for them to have a lot yeah. of uninterrupted playtime to explore, yeah. investigate their environment, understand their environment, um, and really just like this whole child-led experience and also a lot of connected time with me where I'm super present and um, expressing that deep curiosity about them and their perspective. But it really is like very uncomplicated, my goal. My goal for them is to for them to be intrinsically motivated, confident people who know their value. Like there's nothing they could do that would ever change how much I love them. And I think that it's hard for me to answer a question like let's set a goal because my goal really has everything to do with me pertaining to my children and nothing mm-hmm. to do with them. I kind of look at them like a, a, a beautiful, you know, like peonies, <laughs> peony season, like mm-hmm. unfolding and in their perfect time. Like I just like look at them like they're unfolding before me every day and um, – I don't want anything about their life to be performative and there could be goals like I guess there could be goals like let's learn how to tie your shoes um, or let's start making the bed together um, or let you want I Donovan actually set goals my son is six I was gonna say my daughter is also kind of like telling me now like hey mom I want to do yeah. this <laughs> so I I don't yeah. know like I think that maybe waiting for readiness is an important thing yeah, here because totally. it sounds like our children yeah. are kind of expressing that in an intrinsic way <laughs> my son said I want to yeah I really want to improve at soccer like he's just like I want to get better at ball handling skills I said okay we can totally do that together if you want to sometimes like after school you want to just like play soccer instead of some of the other stuff we do like when we go to the woods you want to bring a soccer ball yeah I'm like cool let's do it we can totally do that or um I'm learning Italian and he's like I think I want to learn Italian too I'm like we can practice together okay you know um so I again like I just think that waiting for that readiness waiting for it to be coming from the child themselves is probably the number one piece of advice I would give Mm -hmm. otherwise uh, we get into kind of a rough territory of like that control dynamic as opposed to the relationship dynamic it would I for people that are new to that whole concept of conscious parenting or maybe fearful about it they feel scared or anxious around what that means and there's like Mm -hmm. a lot of weird misconceptions around it and it really is just that operating from relationship and connection and curiosity not fear control and manipulation and I even in a again, surface level seeming nice way. Um, But I think, what was I going to say? So if you're in that headspace of like, what even is that, like, that you're referring to? (laughs) Um, And I don't know, like, that makes me feel uncomfy. I, I would ask you how you would feel if your husband set goals for you. What I think you need to do, Kate, is start, insert whatever here, how abrupt that might feel and how um, you might instantly question your value. I mean, just be like disrespectful. I just would feel so like is for me, I would struggle with like, oh, so, okay, like you're not happy with what I do now. Like it's not enough. And I, and not to say like we as a couple, again, in this example, like we don't, we make adjustments all the time. We're always growing together and collaborating and expressing our needs Um, But if he were to just simply enlist me with a a set of goals and be like, we need to sit down and work on your goals together, what what you need to improve on, um, I would definitely feel like there's some sort of sense of control and unhealthy nature to our relationship. Mm. And so that's kind of an important example to sort of illustrate what is really being done when we were, if we were to do that same thing to our children, it's exactly the same. It just looks different. And and we might paint it with the the well-meaning brush of, but it's for their own good and I'm their parent. Like, I need to. What Maddie and I are here to tell you, <laughs> rounding the corner to seven years, is that your children often have so much to teach you and, and will also, they're, they're following your lead all the time, but the things will unfold exactly when they're supposed to when it comes to what they're motivated to do. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think that it's so hard to for people, me included, when I was first, uh, I mean, still now, it's just like often I need to remind myself to trust the process. And I think the similar in a similar way to the way positive affirmations kind of bring to light those negative thoughts that are being repeated, it's like we need to take those thoughts captive by shining light. Um, I think that yeah, for our children... Um, we have so many preconceived negative assumptions about about them, about their future, about what age 12 will look like. And if they don't do this at age 7, like then age 21 is going to be like this is definitely going to happen. And it's just like, man, but if you always come back to like, okay, but children are meant to be a blessing to me. And like, how can I read, speaking of receiving, like, how can I receive that more? How can I just, like, even if everyone else in the world doesn't believe that, how can I believe that? How can I trust that I actually am the perfect parent for my child? And, like, my child is the perfect member to join my family, like, for this relationship. Um, And then I think there's so many layers to that where you just constantly get these reminders of, like, also, like, how would I have turned out if, if I had treated me the way that I'm treating my child now. Let me just like play that out. What would my interests have been? What would I, like, I don't know. I Like you were saying about the catastrophizing. If we really play out our worst fear of like, well, if I allow this right now, him like, or her to ha- cry in the grocery store, what then will they be like at age 13? Or, and it's like, okay, wait, so those fears are completely misguided. I think I can just relax a little and trust my child. And, oh, if they're not reading at age five or six, like, could that be okay? Uh, these are just other random examples of things I think people get really caught up on with timelines and goals for kids. But, um, yeah, I think that we are just in such a industrialized system with children that we often need reminders to be like, actually, they're human just like us. And in the same way that we're learning how to treat ourselves gentler and figure out what's meaningful to us and um, live more in alignment with our values and maybe like what's, what God's calling us to, I think it's just so in alignment with what you teach. Yeah. So anyway, thank you so much. For spending in two hours <laughs> discussing this with me, discussing way more than just gold. My pleasure. It's been an absolute joy for me, Kaylin. You're the best. Yeah. I love you no, forever. I love you too. I'm so happy we got to do this. And I'm so excited for your podcast. Oh my gosh. Thank you for shout it from the rooftops. So amazing. I think I'm going to launch it on next Wednesday, Tuesday or Wednesday. So I'm going to just put that out oh there. Oh my gosh. Coming no, soon. No pressure. Course, when, when it's out, people will be like, okay, that's cool, <laughs> whatever. But just between you yeah. and me. Oh, my gosh. That's kind of the best. What did people say? Um, don't tell people what you're going to do. Just show them what you've done. Just do it. I'm like, that's, so, that's such a nice reminder like for me because sometimes I'm like, oh, I've got to keep people interested and be like, on Friday, I'm going to do a YouTube video. And I'm like, I might as well yeah. just share the YouTube video. Just share Especially it. in like case things come up. Yes, as they often do. Anyway. Oh, Caitlin. Okay, I'm going to hit stop. Thank you so much for listening to this episode with Caitlin. I hope that you enjoyed it as much as I did. If any of the topics that we covered today about parenting or reparenting ourselves as women piqued your interest, you can check out Caitlin on Instagram and YouTube. She has a whole catalog of beautiful content for you to enjoy. Um, I feel like her content is kind of like mine where it's like you're learning something, but it's also just a really relaxing therapeutic experience. Maybe that was giving myself too much of a compliment because I just think that the work Caitlin does is incredible and she's just one of those people that is such a light. Like I, every time I'm with her, I feel like I'm a better person for it. Anyways, if you enjoyed this episode, she also has a podcast, which I think you'll really like. I will leave all that stuff linked in the description, as well as her self-paced parenting course designed to help you make your life and parenting more uncomplicated um, so that you can enjoy more peace and presence 
Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Wholehearted Podcast. I hope to spend time with you chatting about slow living and minimalism again really soon.